Hello and welcome to this express video for paper FA2 maintaining financial records. This video is based on our express notes for this paper which you can download from www.theexpgroup.com. We will be dealing now with chapter 8 of these notes and we'll talk about accruals and prepayments. Some people say accruals and prepayments are the essence of accounting. They are the true reflection of accrual basis of accounting. Which says that transactions should be recorded in the period to which in which they occur, but they should be reported in the financial statements in the period to which they relate. And accruals are expenses that have been incurred, however, we haven't got an invoice yet. So no invoice, but the service was consumed. If the service was consumed, we know we will have to pay for it. However, we haven't got an invoice, so we couldn't have possibly booked it. Prepayments is the other way around. This is where we paid for the service. And usually we got an invoice for it or some other confirmation, but the service relates to more than just the current period. All right, let's do some examples. Let's start with accruals. And let's look at electricity. Although you could make the same example with phone bills, for example. Let's assume you get invoice and pay electricity quarterly. Um, you usually get that invoice, let's say, a month after the end of the quarter. So let's draw a full year, that will be the 1st of January, that's the 31st of March, 30th of June, that's going to be 30th of September, and 31st of December. Now we got an invoice for the first quarter here, and it said $100. We got an invoice for the second quarter here for $120 and an invoice for the third quarter of $110. Now we come to the end of the year, it's the 31st of December and right now what we posted in our expenses For electricity is well quarter one invoice and it was already paid quarter two invoice probably already paid quarter three invoice probably already paid as well but it's obvious for us that we also used electricity in quarter four so Technically speaking, we would expect to have some expenses there in terms of electricity. We can't just leave our expense account without that charge for quarter four because we know we consumed some electricity. We know we're going to get an invoice for it, except that we haven't got it yet. And that is the moment where we will accrue. Even though we did not get the invoice, we will treat it 
as if we got it because we know we already consumed the service. We will put that sort of like payable, I'll put it here like payables without invoices. We know we will have to pay for it. We haven't got an invoice yet. Now, to what amount? Obviously, there may be one million ways of determining it. Um, we could take the average of all the previous quarters, or maybe we should take quarter four of last year, if we have any. Here in this example, we just started the activity. Or maybe we should go to the meter and check what it says and then multiply by the rate. So there are ways of doing it. It's not about a total accuracy because financial statements do not need to be 100% accurate. Look, whatever, whichever method we apply, it's better to put the effect of the application of that method into the expense account, then put nothing there, then leave it blank. So if we take the average of all the three quarters, we will have the total of 330 divided by three quarters, so the average is 110. And we will post it 110 as accruals and expenses here. Now at the end of the year look what's going to happen. This whole amount will be transferred to income statement account so that will be 440 transfer there and that's the end of the year. Now this accrual account, well, brought down balance will be 110, carried down balance for the next year will be 110. This balance remains. Now it is most likely that right after year end, somewhere in January, we will ultimately get that invoice. And let's say that invoice says $130. It's different to the amount we accrued. What do we do then? Well, not much really. After year end, the first thing we do is we take out the previous year's accrual. So release the accrual, 110 here, release the accrual, 110 here. We got an invoice now, so we will put quarter four last year, 130 and the other side of the entry will be payables or cash if we pay it straight away. Now look what we have effectively. We release the accrual of 110 and put the 130 into the uh, T account. That leaves us effectively with the expense of 20, which is just the difference between our estimate and reality. And that difference will be left in the expenses of that following year. We were trying to be as accurate as possible. We weren't 100% accurate. It doesn't really matter. The difference stays in the following year. Now if we look at prepayments,
we will take the example of insurance. Again, let's draw a year. And here, halfway through that year, at the 30th of June, we paid 1400 as insurance premium. for a company car and that is obviously for 12 months so that service will run for more than the end of the year now because we're following the accrual concept only half of that expense should be the expense of this year The other half is the expense of the following year. If so, then let's look at the postings. Insurance expense. And cash is what we have. On the 30th of June, we paid 1400 and we posted it as, ins as insurance expense. At year end, we come to think about it and we say, oh, but only half of that 1400 relates to the current year. The other half is a free payment. for next year. So what we will do at year end is we'll take out the 700 and put it in prepayments. And again, when the accounts are balanced, what will go to income statement, sorry for that, I always get it wrong, income statement is the 700 while here we will have the carry down balance of 700 and we will start the next year with a brought down balance of 700 and because we will take it out from there release to expenses Next year, 700 will be recorded as insurance expense again, just as it was supposed to be.